All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the broadcast. I'm your host, Josh Reeves. This is the Monday, April 16th, 2018 edition of the broadcast. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and being here with me again for another edition of the show. We've got a lot of stories to talk about here tonight, a lot of different news stories and uh, different topics. We're running the gamut tonight. And boy, I tell you what, that fucking Alex Jones, man, that motherfucker has found a way to keep himself in the news every single week. For months and months now, pretty much the entire time since uh, Trump was elected, and it's it's you know <laughs> it's thrilling for me to sit back and watch all this shit play out exactly as I said it was going to play out months, years ago, even you know. Uh, <clears throat> it's funny to see all that happening playing out now. So I'll be getting into all that as well as a bunch of other different stories here tonight, ranging from. All different topics. Into the world, Nibiru shit, chemtrails. As I said, Jones, we got tons of stuff here tonight, so get ready. We'll get into all of it here. I continue to work on uh, my film, Spellcasters Volume 2. I have to take a break, though. I, uh... <laughs> That's all I can say. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, man. Holy fuck. This thing's a fucking monster. Tell you what. <laughs> uh, I'm way in over my fucking head. I've had to do some rewriting. I've had to go back and do, you know, change some stuff. But uh, I'm, you know, I'm trudging on with it, man. I'm hoping another month at the most and it'll be ready. But it, at this point, you know, look, all my estimations are just that. None of them are set in stone dates because there's, there's just no way to know when you're going to be done with it all. It's done when it's done. <clears throat> so that's the way this is going to be. That's the way all my films are. It's done when it's done. I'm, I don't rush films out anymore. I did that with the first three or four films I made. I, I, pretty much everything up until Secret Ride Volume 2, they were all rushed because I was listening to other people and I should have been listening to myself. And, uh, after that, man, every film after that from, uh, Lost Secrets volume one on, I've taken my time with making and, and, uh, when you compare those first films to the ones that came after from Lost Secrets on, yeah, you can see why taking my time and doing it right is always the smart play. I want it to be out there, ready to be out there as much as, Anybody is, but uh, it's going to be ready when it's ready. Some fucking troll on fucking YouTube the other day, or spook tube as I call it now. I just from here on out referring to YouTube as spook tube. God damn. I mean, it, it, it's always been, you know, pretty fucking heavy with the spooks and feds and trolls and everything. Boy, I tell you what. And it's not just, you know, it's, it, I know it's everywhere, but I can specifically tell that, I mean, this happens to me every time I get ready, every time I get about ready to put a film out, here they come and they're fucking piss scared as they fucking should be. So all they do is they use it. Let me tell you something, your little psychological tactics, and this goes for non-spooks too, because non-spooks and non-feds and people like that use this, try to use this type of technique on me. They've tried to use it on me lately with the, uh, you know, switching the show over where there's no, no, no full shows on YouTube anymore. Your little psychological shit that you pull that you, you know, that you pull on your girlfriend when she's, you know, when you know she's fucking got you dead to rights and you try to pull the psychological manipulation shit and the turn it back around on them shit. Well, that shit doesn't work with me. But it's funny to see these little fucking butt hurt, and there had, there's not a lot of them, but it's just funny to see these little butt hurt trolls try to use these tactics. Look, I'm, I'm not one of your little weak minded little fucking people you can prey on, okay? That's not me. Get that out of your fucking head right now. Your little psychological bullshit does not work on me. Thank you. But somebody, some, some fucking troll on uh, SpookTube the other day said, oh, by the time you get this movie out, the info is going to be old. 
Really? I mean, that's just such a, that's a great example of, of just lies and just something somebody would post to try to make other people see that and make them believe it. It's just, it's just psych warfare. I mean, that's an uninformed, that's the stupidest, most uninformed statement that anybody's ever made because I've said time to get on this show. The bulk of the information in this film, a lot of it is, it ain't out there, dude. I've got stuff in here nobody's put together yet, and I haven't talked about it on the show. I have been absolutely fucking mum. That used to be difficult for me to do. It's not difficult for me to do anymore. By the time we get this film out, it's going to be old info. Um, let me let me give you a little hint. Let me give you a little fucking clue. In case you didn't have one. Okay? I could put this movie out five years from now. Ten years from now. And there would be shit in here that I guarantee you nobody's ever found you and really it, it I, i've got to be 100 honest on this even though i'm not i won't act on this because i'm actually going to put the movie up but i, I just got to say i mean when i get comments like that really there's there's a part of me that says you know what i could just say fuck you to everybody <laughs> you know what i mean i could just not put the movie out not put the information in there i have and keep it to myself because I have stuff in this film. Nobody, it's not fucking bragging. It's just facts. It's the truth. Nobody's put together yet. And it sucks. And the reason I would think like that, like maybe I don't, you know, don't want to put this information out at all, is because once it's out there, as I've said before, all this stuff is going to spread. These are going to become new established fucking topics or conspiracy theories, whatever you want to call them. You'll see other people platforming on it you'll see other people taking it incorporating it into their work never giving back credit to me and acting like it's just something that was just been out there in the ether and that everybody's known about for years that's what's going to happen because they've done it to me before that's that's the stuff i've got in here i, I gotta tell you the, the the stuff during the course of the making of this film the discoveries i've made that nobody else has made have been fucking mind-blowing Mind blowing, especially the whole thing that I've talked about with uh, with Fall and the fake Paul and exposing. You know, much of my work it, it, inadvertently, I've never tried to make it this way. It's just always come out this way. Whether it's been the CMP Council for National Policy stuff or the Law Secret stuff, but every single time I get on a topic like this, I start making a film about it. Ultimately, I end up not just exposing the conspiracy, but exposing the conspiracy within the conspiracy and the false stories and whatnot that go along with it. You know, all this time people have been pushing the phony Paul theory thing and the Paul is dead thing, saying the original one died and they replace him with this guy and that's not, that's not necessarily the whole truth. That's not it at all. And uh, it's unbelievable. I mean, when you, when you, when you first, I, I'm telling you this, when you first see the movie and you first find out that the original Paul didn't die but went on and, and was done, had the same thing done to him that these other replacements had plastic surgery, all this. Uh, stuff to the original person to make them more, look more like this other person. I, I mean, I, I, I'm not going to blame you first. You're going to be like, your, your first reaction when you hear me say it's going to be, what? Come on. No way. I'm not going to believe that. And then you see, when it hit me, it hit me instantly. And it was like, oh my God, I can't believe I never fucking saw it in right in front of my face for decades. And then when I started digging deeper into it, right, and started to find out more, and started saying, okay, well, if this, is, if this is the case, I always do this, okay, well, if this is true, then this, this, and this has to be true, you know? And I found those things. But finding out that this person who went on to become a completely different person and was in a successful band as well, the fact that I found this person hinting at this and more than hinting, basically just coming right out with it and putting the clues in all of their records 
That was when it sealed it for me. But literally, I've got connections in here to stuff, and not just one. I've, I've got at least three separate cases in this film that has info in it that's stuff that's just flat not out there. It's not anywhere. So again, you know, if you're thinking that, uh, and it's just hilarious. These people just they they only want me to come out with this stuff again so they can steal it. And uh, you know, in the last show, I told everybody because the last show that was the first show where we're going now. Because as I discussed in the last show, if you didn't hear the, the previous show, it, it's here on YouTube partially. Uh, part of it is you can at least hear some of it, but yeah, we're putting all the complete shows up on. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you have to have a membership now. We're not going to be putting full shows on YouTube anymore. And somebody listened to the last show and was like, "Oh, that show was terrible. There was no info in it." Well, you listen to the twenty or twenty-five minute version, whatever I put up on YouTube. The whole show's an hour and twenty-five minutes long. And it was jam-packed. Had some great stuff in. It. And and I've got lots of emails and comments about the show. From the people that listened to it that actually ponied up and got fucking memberships. Remember I said, you know, how fantastic, how great it could be, how life-changing it could be for our work if, if, you know, all the people that listened to the YouTube shows got a membership? Of course, as I predicted, we've gotten very little. We've had about 10 people so far get memberships out of the thousands that listen every week. And i got to be honest, with the exception, I think maybe one or two names... Everybody else that signed up and got memberships weren't people who didn't already have them before, or hadn't already supported our work. I recognize literally everybody's name except except two who were new ones. So once again, it's you know it's the usual people that actually do support our work that are getting memberships and everything else. And I want to thank you guys very much for uh, for doing that and continuing to support my work. And uh, you know. But it's just hilarious now. So I, so I guess when I, now when I put, regardless that I put all over the video in multiple spots, this is only a partial video and subscribe to get the whole thing. Let me be crystal clear about something in case I wasn't crystal clear about it. And, and, and I don't think I was. So let me reiterate this and let me be crystal clear because I apologize for not doing it originally. Every time I do a show, I will be putting up a part of that show on YouTube. But I'll tell you point blank, and again, I'm sorry if I wasn't crystal clear about this. You don't honestly think that I'm going to put up on YouTube the best parts of the show for free, do you? You don't really honestly believe that. I mean, if you do, I, I mean, oh, there's no hope for you. <laughs> I mean, what would be the point then? The whole point is so is that you get the membership so you can hear the whole show and get the whole info. I'm not going to be putting all the key cherry info and the best parts of the show in the YouTube previews on, on YouTube. Did you not get that? Did you not understand that? What would be the point? So, in, in case you don't get it, yeah, most of what you're going to be hearing on the YouTube clips Every time you see a show, a show post from now on, it says partial show. That means that in the archives, if you if you weren't a cheap ass and, and got a membership, you would know this, is going to be the full show. And that's where the bulk of the info is. So those of you who, who are just like, no, I'm not going to get a membership. I'll just, uh, I'll just listen to the partial show he puts on YouTube and... and uh, that'll be enough info. No. Not gonna, that's not how this works. <laughs> My goodness. But it's typical. I mean, I knew this was going to happen. I mean, just because I switched this over, I got people leaving comments and sending me emails. Oh, you know, you should make lots of money now that you're going to subscribe. <laughs> no, people are not. Are you kidding me? If they weren't supporting me before, just because I'm switching it over now and, and to memberships does not mean it's going to make people, more people get memberships. Well, like I said, I mean, uh, pretty much every name I recognize are people either re-upping their memberships or we had a couple of people that got memberships again, meaning these are people that had memberships in the past and, and didn't keep their membership up 
because I was obviously I was putting out stuff on YouTube and whatnot. Some of these people I know have been listening for seven or eight, nine years. And they signed up and got memberships again. So thank you to those people too. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it is hilarious. But um, no, as I said, yeah, don't think for a second that, oh, I'll just listen to the, that'll still be some info. No, that's not, no, uh-uh. The good shit, if you want to hear the good shit, you want to hear the real, because there was a lot of good stuff in that show. Uh, one of our listeners left a comment and said, uh, the rest of the show, meaning the show that you, it's not for free on YouTube, the rest of the show reminded me of the good old Buckaroo, Buckaroo Bonsai theme song days of the broadcast, and the Enchilada King makes an appearance. Yeah, the shit was deep about the movie talk radio. Can't wait for the next horse shit and chicanery show. Oh, yeah, well, don't worry about that. Yeah, you got plenty of horse shit and chicane. We got plenty of that for you. Jones, he will be making an appearance too in this show too. That's for sure. He'll be here. Don't don't worry about that. <laughs> anyway, um, but other than other than just a few, you know, dumbass fucking trolls that were never that, that you know never supported my work anyway. That's the thing. As I've said, it's the same old shit. You know. The people that uh, people that actually do support my work don't bitch about anything. The people that bitch and leave comments and and, and are butt hurt are the ones that you know are just pissed because they're going their free gravy trains over. That's really all, all it boils down to. But you know it's it's funny, man. That's how it all it all is that way when it comes to this stuff. Everybody wants the info. Nobody wants to do anything to help it, and I experienced this. In a completely separate way, um, with my rock wall work, because I, I, I get still get messages all the time from people. Hey, are you still going to have a rock wall dig? Hey, I want to come be on that. I want to come. You can't. You wouldn't believe. I've gotten probably. I mean, thousands. Probably five thousand. I probably had five thousand emails from people. Hey, uh, are you going to do that rock wall dig? Because I want to come down and be a part of that. Well, how about you help me raise funds, and then we and then we can do it. No, no, I couldn't do that. Everybody want I, that's. A, I mean, I tried and tried and tried. I mean, I still am am, am going to try to get one off the ground at some point. But the money that it takes to do it, everybody wants to be a part of. It. Nobody wants to chip in anything. And literally, if every single person that has emailed me about the rock wall dig chipped in a little bit, we'd have it done. Same thing. It's, it's no different than you know the day to day work of this stuff. And I've said it once, I've said it again, the only thing that limits any of the work we're able to do is the funding to be able to do it. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's just hilarious. So many people, man, on and on and on. People I didn't know from Adam, they could have been spooks or anything. People really think I would do that? They, I mean, people really think I'd be stupid enough? Just to go, oh, yeah, come on down and have this dig. I don't know you from Adam, and you didn't do a goddamn thing to help this happen, but sure, come on down and be a part of this. I mean, literally, people, that's the attitude that people have when they email me. Like, they just presume that, and I'll be like, well, you know, that's all well and fine. You want to help, but how about help me raise the money to do this? Chirp, chirp, cricket, cricket, you never hear back from me. You know? Everybody wants the info, but nobody wants to make any sacrifices. I've sacrificed everything. I mean, you think I want to live my life the way I fucking live it, the way I do now? No, I fucking do it because of this. I mean, I, you know, I'm going to continue to fucking expose this stuff, and I'm going to continue to do research and all this stuff, but I, I'll, I'll tell you point blank, man. You know, and people fucking don't like it when I say this shit. But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter how much info we put out there. And I didn't used to have this attitude. I know it to be the truth now. Nobody wants to have to sacrifice anything for truth. They want everybody else to sacrifice everything and pay everything that it costs to, do, to make movies and do shows and do all this stuff. They want everybody else to flow. The, then they just want the info for free. Let me ask you a question. Can you go to college and get a degree at college? 
for free? No, you can't. But in the end, isn't that just info too? I rest my case. <laughs> and yeah, I'll, you know, look, I'll do my fucking show any fucking way I want to do. That's another thing. You don't like it? Move the fuck on. You don't like it because I cuss? Move the fuck on. Keep on going. Go back and listen to Jonesy. Go back, back and listen to fucking Dick Phil and you gold ads then. I'll put links in this video. You can also go to my website, theglobalreality.com, and you can hit the subscribe button in the top right-hand corner of the page. That will open up the all the choices for you for your length of subscription. It's $10 a month if you get it individually by the month. $80 for a year. And uh, I'm, we're extending this until tomorrow. I was going to end at midnight tonight, but we're extending this until midnight on Tuesday the 17th. If you get the $500 lifetime archive membership, you will also receive unlimited downloads from our download shop where I sell all my movies and all my audiobooks. You will get lifetime downloads, anything you want, anytime. You just send me an email, let me know, and I'll send you links for life as well. So you'll be locked into all my work, all my shows, all my films, and all my audiobooks, past, present, and future, by clicking on the lifetime membership button. For $500 in the subscribe, Podbean subscribe thing. Uh, Podbean, the, uh, a lot of it got emails from people saying, well, I, I got the subscription, but how do I uh, log into how do I log into where the shows are? Well, um, the shows are posted, hosted by Podbean. So you go to podbean.com. You can search podbean.com for the Global Reality or the Global Reality with Josh Reeves. And they also have an app. Uh, they have an Android app and they have an Apple app. So, and I, I want to tell this because I don't know if some people who have memberships already might not know this. But they do have an app. There's a Podbean app you can download. Uh, and uh, the great thing about that is you don't have to have your computer be at your computer to listen to the show. You just download the app to your phone, subscribe to my show, and every time there's a New in there, you'll get a notification. You can listen to the phone to the show right on your phone. And if you got one of those, if you, you can connect your, you know, you can connect your phone or your car to Bluetooth or whatever. And that way, if you if you have a subscription, you can listen to my show while you're driving, or you can, you know, if you're on a road trip, you can hook it up, hook the app up, and uh, just sit there and listen to archive shows while you're going down the road. So yet another reason to get a subscription. Again, that's where we're going to be putting all the full shows. If you're listening to this right now and you're hearing the sound of my voice, whatever you're hearing right now is not the entire show. You gotta subscribe and be a member to get that. So please do so. You can also uh, go check out our social media pages on Facebook, the Global Reality Radio Network Facebook page, and the Josh Rees Filmmaker Talk Show Host Explore page. On the Global Reality Radio Network Facebook page, I post links to the shows when they are posted in the Podbean uh, subscription website. So as soon as they're available, I post the links there. So that's another way. If you get a membership and you still can't figure out where to find the shows, if you just go to the Facebook page and click on the show... It'll take it'll op t open up and take you to the uh, download page, and it'll just be the the download page for that show. But if you click on the top, it's got like a matrix type thing with like numbers and stuff. If you click on the top where it says uh, it's like the top banner where it says the Global Reality Radio Network, if you tap type. Uh, I'm sorry, if you click on that, it'll take you back to the full page where all the other archive shows are at. So that is another way you can do it. We will also we are also selling. Individual daily shows. Here's another thing for the, those of you out there that don't have memberships or don't want to get memberships or anything else. Um, 
by the way, even if you don't have a PayPal account or debit card or a credit card, you can always get one of these like Visa prepaid cards. And you can load up as much as you want on there and then go to the subscription button or the subscription page. You'll find the links here on, on the video on YouTube. And you can also find it by going to my website, thegoldreality.com and hitting subscribe in the top right-hand corner of the page. You can go there and you can use one of those Visa gift cards or whatever, whatever kind you buy. You can use that to order a subscription. It works. Some of our other listeners have done it. Um, you can even, you know, put up to the amount of the lifetime, 500 bucks or you can put that amount in there. Or you can just do a year, put a, put 80 bucks on, you know, 100 bucks on there and whatever. You can spend 80 and get the uh, one year subscription to the show with your Visa gift card. So, again, there's no excuse. Not having a PayPal account or not having a credit card or debit card uh, does not exclude you from getting a subscription. I don't think I mentioned that last time. Uh, and again, individual daily shows are available to download in the download shop where all of my documentary films and audiobooks can be found. The link in the middle of the page at theglobalreality.com says download all Josh Reeves' films here. If you click that, that's the download shop. The, each show, uh, the shows will be in there for a week and then they'll cycle out with new ones. You can buy individual daily shows for $3 a piece if you don't wish to get a membership. And you can also use uh, prepaid cards for the download shop as well. Sometimes I'm not clear about these things. I get emails about them, so I want to go ahead and put that out on the show while it was on my mind in case there were some people that were that hadn't got memberships yet or anything else. But, uh, hey, you know, you got till midnight tomorrow night. If you can afford to get the lifetime, that's the way to go. Because then you're just, you don't have to worry about it anymore. You're locked in. That you'll get all of my shows that I post up for life indefinitely. And anytime I make a new movie or put up a new audio book, yeah, you'll get that for free as well. And you don't have to worry about pre-ordering movies or I don't have the money this week to buy this download. I want to, oh, Josh's movie, just new movie just came out or, or he just put a new audio book and I don't get paid for two weeks and I want to listen to it now. Well, if you get the lifetime, then you don't have to worry about that. As soon as I put up anything new, you just email me, you get it. Regardless of if you don't get paid for another week or two weeks or you're broke or, you know, whatever happens, life and stuff happens. Maybe you're at a point in your life right now where you can afford to be able to, you know, have a monthly membership or buy downloads. What, what, if, what if you're not in five years from now, you know, or two years from now or whatever? You know, so if you can afford to get that now, not only does that help us out considerably, but it allows you to be able to, okay, whew, I don't have to worry about it. You know, my fan financial situation changes and I can't afford to keep my subscription going anymore. I can't afford to buy downloads or whatever. Or prices go up, you know, whatever. Boom, I don't have to worry about that. That's the other thing. I started the Podbean thing in 2012. And I have ne and even though people have bitched about it at the time, I have never raised my prices. My prices are exa exactly the same as they have been from the very, very beginning. So, I, you know, I haven't price gouged. You know, if you bought a $10 membership when they first went on sale... In 2012, it's the same amount now. Um, and, uh, again, I don't plan on changing that. But we just, I mean, the problem is we just don't have enough. We haven't ever had enough, and we still don't have enough uh, subscribers, you know, paid subscribers to really, for it to really make a big difference in, in how much we're bringing in. Now, again, as I said in the last show, you know, if every person who just listened to one of the shows a week and, you know, any of the ones that have 1,000, 1,200, if 1,000 people got memberships, that would be game-changing if 500 did. But, you know, we've all, you know, don't, to only have a real small amount of uh, monthly subscribers, that's what I'm hoping to change. And hopefully that will change down the road, but uh, regardless of that, The main thing about it is, is that the people who, uh, you know, it's just, it's the people who support my work, support my work. That's the thing. 
You know, and none of them got griped and bitched and pissed and moaned about it. None of them, not one single person. Many people applauded me for doing it. So, um, that brings up a whole nother topic, doesn't it? Because, listen, as I stated in the last show, man, you know, I don't fucking make the rules for the system. I don't like it as much as anybody else does. But that's the way it is. And we all would not like to have to have electricity bills and water bills and food bills and gas bills. You know, and everything else. And, you know, it, yeah, I understand. It's, it's feudalism. The old haves and the have-nots thing. But again, I didn't make the rules. I was born into this system like everybody else was. But that does, again, that does bring up an interesting topic, though, doesn't it? I mean, you know, if you, if you can afford, what, what, how is it in the real world? If you can afford to go to, to college, if you can afford to go to university, if you can afford to uh, get a degree for a high-paying job, then you're going to, you know. But if you can't afford to do those things, then you're going to end up working, you know, a shitty job like everybody else. And there's people out there that, uh, you know, are mad Because they don't think information should be that that way. And again, as I stated earlier, it's all, you know, it's still just information. But again, it's an interesting thing. It's an interesting topic to bring up and think about because it's a pipe dream to think. And, and look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to have to, you know, to have to have this standpoint but it's the truth and the truth hurts truth ain't always fucking comfortable but when i see the you know the well like i've talked about the stuff with with the secret societies and how they're set up and how they you know originally intended to teach you know mankind in secret, the true history of who we are, where we come from, and the rest of those things. And the reason it, that the original secret society structures were set up in those days was because even back then, you know, that's where the whole terminology of, of the profane come into play. You know, the profane are people who are considered not worthy or deemed, um, you know, not worthy to have the information to, to have the knowledge and information. And with the internet and everything now, everybody thinks that everyone should be entitled to the same amount of information and that it should all be free. And everyone should just give it away and screw that if you have to have costs to make a film and all this, the rest of the stuff. No. People think that somehow if you have information that nobody else has, you are automatically entitled to give it away for free. Well, if that were the case, how come the colleges and universities aren't giving away their knowledge and their degrees and everything else for free? So I'm sorry. And you can hate me and call me an asshole and whatever else you want to call me for saying this. But again, it's the truth and the truth's not always comfortable. But the fact of the matter is it's going to be the same way with this stuff. If you can afford it, you're going to get the good info. If you can't, you're not going to. And honestly, I'm just fine with that. You can sit here and call me every name in the book you want to call me. And, but I don't care. You know, does does why should somebody i mean i've you know let me tell you something 
If you added up all the hours I've spent researching, studying, getting my knowledge base and my understanding of this stuff together, it would equal the amount of time that you would spend if you had spent uh, the amount of time it would take to get four degrees at a university. Okay? Think about how long it would take you to get four degrees. 16 years or whatever. Well, I've been researching 25 years. The people who go out and spend all this money on degrees, do they go and and then give all that knowledge and information away to other people for free so that, so that they can use it to make the same amount of money? No, they don't. All these other ass clowns and all these other fucking so-called hosts and so-called... None of these people aren't researchers. They're fucking parrots. The majority of stuff that the majority of people put out is just stuff they fucking regurgitated from other sources. So, yeah. Of course they're going to give that away for free. <laughs> I'm not regurgitating shit that is just something somebody else has already fucking come across. I'm doing my own research and finding things people have never found before. And so because of that, that's why I can choose to not give it all the way for free. I mean, I've had my life threatened. I've had, I've had countless things done to my health. Every time I get an opportunity, they do anything they can to sabotage it, be it going on Coast to Coast AM or getting a TV appearance. I mean, every single time I do anything that starts to get any kind of attention, they come in and spend millions of dollars to try to negate me. And I'm tired of making it easy for the fucks. That's the other thing. If I just put out everything I know and everything I talk about, the, these fuckers don't have to do any work. They just go on YouTube and, and, you know. But then again, that's why I've never fucking... If you added up every fucking show I've ever done in all my movies, it would probably still only equate to maybe roughly 10% of everything that I know as far as this information goes. Because there's just no way you can put it all into one thing and there's no way you can get it all out there ever. That's why I go back and rehash topics and stuff I've talked about in the past because you know, there's always other stuff that, that comes into play. Um... Yeah, as I was saying earlier, you know, all this, you, know, you got to realize, it, it, it's just, it's funny that people can understand this stuff up to a point, and then they just get lost. You know, they believe one end of it is, they always believe that there's one end that's real and one end that's fake, instead of understanding that it's all fake. I don't like this stuff with the, uh, what was that, what's that guy's name, David Hogg or whatever? I mean, yeah, you know what? Guess what? The fucking alt-riders and the, and the right-wingers and stuff calling call this guy fake and calling him a phony and everything else. You know what? They're right. They are right about it. I mean, think, look, at, look at this guy. He's, you know, he's a witness to this shooting, and then overnight, he's got a polished appearance. And he's doing fucking TV appearances like he's been fucking doing it his whole life. That's a trained fucking CIA operative, people. And yeah, they start training them, putting them into work that young. Yes, they do. But guess what? The fucking people like Alex Jones and others that are saying that he's a fake and, and, and saying that he's a Christ actor, they're fake too. But people literally can't wrap their minds around that. They think one end is real and the other end is fake. Instead, they're both fake. Uh, another prime example, I mean, here's, uh, I really get sick of talking about fucking big enchilada though, by the way, I'm not gonna lie to you, I get sick of talking about this fucker, but it's not gonna matter, because as I said a long time ago, you have a, just as you have a controlled ascent, they had a control scent with Alex Jones, and, and look, I, I, I'll be honest, I've said this from the very beginning, I don't think that Alex Jones always knew from the get-go that he was being groomed to be what he's become. I think for a good portion of his 
life and his career doing stuff. He had no clue. But definitely over the past, I'd say, four or five years, there, there, was, there was a shift that occurred where you could tell that, the, that there was a change where he went from kind of like, you know, just being who he thought who he was to now, and he, he, you know, for the past four or five years, I would say he, he's fully aware that he's who he's controlled by and the rest of it. And of course, as I've said many times, they'll have a, just have, they've had a controlled ascent of him. They'll have a, a controlled descent of him and they'll bring him down and it'll all be controlled. And then they'll have his little replacement rolled up. Some-